discourses we've been having all these days on our beloved St. Charles Borromeo. And the topic is canonization of St. Charles Borromeo. This is a saying that I've heard once somewhere. If this one and that one can become a saint, why can't I? It sounds as if becoming a saint is such a banal affair. But one who truly aspires for sainthood, I hope, will have something else to say. Perhaps it could be, when I go to know about saints like St. Charles Borromeo, I really wonder if I can even dream of becoming one. I remember a homily I had listened to on the occasion of a sister's silver jubilee when the priest exclaimed, Sister X is someone who has taken her call to religious life seriously. It impressed me a lot. We have in St. Charles, who took his call to be the administrator and pastor after the example of Jesus very seriously. He was consistent in his practice of this decision once it was taken. One of those virtues that exemplify him as a rare saint is the early choice of path he was to follow. He applied all energies to reform himself since his youth. And the other virtue that made St. Charles Borromeo a saint was that of following Jesus who had mercy on the crowd. However, it is only when the church with an infallible declaration recognizes the virtues of an individual, canonization of a virtuous person is constituted. Church arrives at this verdict only after a long and rigorous examination has been made. The chronological statement of what took place in memory of St. Charles in that happy novena years, 1601 to 1610, which preceded the great day is the best proof of the seriousness of this method. On 12th May 1602, Clement VIII beatified Charles. In 1604, this case was sent on to the Congregation of Rites. On 1st November 1610, Paul V canonized Charles. Three years later, the Church added his feast to the general Roman calendar for celebration on 4th November. He is the patron saint of bishops, cardinals, seminarians and spiritual leaders. Before the church canonizes an individual, she requires another proof, the testimony of miracles performed through him while alive and especially after death. They are a confirmation of human investigation. If this confirmation exists, there can be no error because it is furnished by heaven. Hence, in every process of canonization, the church expressly requires evidence of miracles. I am very enthusiastic about speaking a lot about it because this generation seeks science. Charles Borromeo is one of those saints whose holiness was widely acknowledged even during his life. His reputation for virtue and sanctity was such that wherever he was passing, people flocked to him in thousands, kneeling on the roads to ask for his blessing. Cities were instantly transformed during his visits. The inhabitants willingly giving up their worldly amusements 
in order to attend to piety and devotion in the presence of the saintly prelate, churches and cathedrals were overflowing as everyone desired to hear his mass and sermon and receive holy communion from his hands. On one occasion, he gave communion to as many as 11,000 people. Objects belonging to him or touched by him were sought after and revered by the faithful as relics even while the saint was still alive. The rooms in which he rested at night during his visitations were reverently kept by the house owners from profane use and converted to oratories or else deemed sacred after the cardinal had honored them by his presence. Even many Protestant heretics were so convinced of St. Charles's sanctity that they too carefully preserved as precious treasures objects that were used by or came into contact with him. The universal belief in the sanctity of the great prelate only increased after his death. Popular devotion and confidence in his intercession arose almost immediately. The people of Milan, on their own accord, kept the day of his death as a feast of obligation. God was pleased to work miracles through St. Charles, even in his lifetime, many duly certified by physicians and under oath. During his visitations to the Swiss valleys, on at least two occasions, the Lord, hearing St. Charles's prayer, miraculously saved his companions who were at the point of drowning in a river or plunging to their deaths in the mountains. Numerous people possessed by evil spirits were freed after a benediction of the saintly archbishop. Countless more prodigies occurred after his death as were also wrought by his relics. The sick and disabled who paid a visit to St. Charles's body exposed for several days after his death and touched it in a belief of obtaining a cure by the merits of the great servant of God were instantly healed of their maladies. Thousands of miracles, many recorded under oath for the canonization process, happened in the years following Cardinal Borromeo's entry to heaven. Great numbers of incurably ill were instantly restored to health, including those suffering from birth defects and paralytics who regained the use of their lame limbs upon praying at the saint's tomb or in front of his pictures. In some cases, Saint Charles appeared shining like the sun to the sick and dying in their sleep to tell them they had been healed and indeed upon waking they found themselves restored to perfect health. A boy born to an apothecary and his wife who had already lost two small children to the same malady their youngest was born with died on the sixth day of his life in the presence of his parents, a nurse and matron. While the father went out to arrange for his funeral, he implored St. Charles, to whom he was very devout, for help. And the dead child was not only restored to life with no sign of his illness, but grew far stronger and more robust than common for his age. Another astonishing miracle involved giving sight to a boy born blind without eyes in his sockets. The mother, devoted to St. Charles, named the newborn after him. On the 25th day after the child's birth, while the mother was praying for his intercession, her daughter saw the saint clad in his pontifical robes appeared in the air to give the boy his blessing. Turning immediately to little Charles, mother and daughter saw, to their astonishment, that he now had two perfectly formed and sound eyes. Such miracles were not limited to Italy alone, but were also recorded in other parts of Christendom. Wherever people prayed for St. Charles's intercession, the beneficiaries of miraculous cures 
included many members of nobility and even royalty, most notably in Poland. Relics of the saint were also held in great veneration by kings and commoners alike. The king of Spain preserved with the greatest reverence and devotion a small portion of the cardinal's hair shirt. His queen kept as a most precious treasure his chasuble. The Duke of Savoy was presented with the rocher in which St. Charles was buried and in order to give it an honorable place, had it put in the same repository over the high altar in which the holy shroud was preserved. The Grand Duke of Tuscany considered the pontifical glove of the saint he was presented with to be of greater value than any province of his states. The Archduke of Maximilian of Austria held in similar reverence a small portion of one of the Alps used by St. Charles. Pope Paul V preserved with great devotion part of the Alb in which the saint was buried. Cardinal Baronius, whose own canonization cause was reopened a few years later than of St. Charles, upon receiving the stole that had belonged to St. Charles, would not even touch it, but struck his breast as unworthy even to hold so precious a relic in his hands. God was pleased to work miracles by his servants' relics. Mere contact with the things that Charles had used was enough to drive away disease and infirmity. His shoes, also kept by Cardinal Baronius, were used to successfully exorcise the possessed. Spiritual graces obtained by the merits of the saint were even more abundant. Through his intercession, countless obstinate sinners were converted. People who had lived depraved lives suddenly repented, became exceedingly devout and spent the rest of their days in penance for their past sins. St. Charles in heaven has continued to work for salvation of souls as he did while upon earth. Hail, O oh dear patron St. Charles Borromeo. Thank you. O oh saintly reformer St. Charles Borromeo, move us to love and transmit only goodness and kindness of Jesus. You lived your life as an example to shine and guide the church to holiness. Father, keep alive in your people the spirit which filled St. Charles Borromeo. Let your church be continually renewed and show the image of Christ to the world by being conformed to his likeness who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen.